This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2025 Razer Blade 18 with a redesign. We already reviewed the, the Blade 16, and now we're going to look at the 18, which is a much less challenging customer to actually work with. We're going to look at it now. So for 2025, we have Intel's Core Ultra 9 275HX processor, very capable processor with better thermals. We'll talk about that in detail a bit later. And we have your choice of NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti, 5080 or 5090 GPUs. We have a chassis redesign this year. The, the Blade 18 is new to you as a concept. So I'm not gonna go every single thing, but what's different. So we have a chassis redesign here. And as with the Blade 16, Razer realized that, you know, the cult of thinness may be going a little too far. It's a gaming laptop. We need performance, we need cooling, all those things. So instead of making it even thinner, yeah, they're okay if they make it even a little bit thicker. It's still incredibly thin compared to the competition. Even the Asus ROG Strix SCAR 18, which is a pretty slim gaming laptop with which it competes. So now we have a, a kind of a thermal shelf or extension on the bottom, which is why it sits up off the desk, makes it look a little taller next to other laptops when we do those size comparisons, but that brings down an area for more fan room, all that sort of stuff. We have a new vapor chamber design inside. We have three fans. The chassis now accommodates a deeper travel keyboard. Hallelujah. One thing I always complain about with razors is the not tactile very low travel keyboards. We're at 1.5 millimeters of key travel now, which is fairly competitive. I wouldn't mind even more to be honest, but it feels tactile. We're getting more MacBook Pro-like in the feel of that keyboard. Of course, it's per key with the usual Razer Chroma customization. Now you get a number pad though, yay that. You have a stick six speaker audio system with THX spatial audio certification, three smart amplifiers on board. So that's some of the chassis changes that we've got. Now, you still have upgradable internals. Yeah, that is something you can't sometimes even count on with bigger, chunkier Alienwares. You have two RAM slots, you have two M.2, PCIe 4, not 5, one of the few dings here, SSD slots. So good stuff, 99 watt hour battery, which is the largest you can put in a laptop and still have it be able to go on an airplane, legally speaking. So that's all nice. So what, what does all this mean to you? Well, before we're done with everything that's changed, let's talk about something else. And it has Thunderbolt 5, something you can't count on. Gaming laptops don't always have that. So the left side is Thunderbolt 5 and that has DisplayPort 2.1 support so that one connects directly to the nvidia gpu and we have thunderbolt 4 on the right side that connects to the igpu so you have options there why would you ever want to connect to the igpu what if you're just using it for productivity and you just want better battery life that's why Alrighty then so that's sounding good. The display is a polarizing option on a laptop this expensive right you expect the best of the best on everything don't you well we used to have mini LED as an option. Now, no, the only display option is an IPS 500 nit. Now, this is one of the best IPS displays I've seen. You have full P3 gamut coverage on here. It's nice looking and there is no, you know, that IPS bleed, those white spots near the edges, none of that. So the quality and the pick and the assembly of this is excellent. Uh, but it's IPS and mini LED and everybody loves OLED. You can't get an 18 inch OLED right now. So that's dead in the water, but no mini LED and you used to be able to. Why did they do this? Probably for higher refresh rates and because a more reliable dual mode. When they tried doing that with mini LED, it was a bit of a challenge. So you have two native resolutions here, 4K plus because it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio, hence the plus and full HD plus. So that's nice. 240 Hertz refresh rate when you're in 4K mode. And yes, some games you can actually get somewhere close to that, which is nice and not just esports titles, but the full HD plus is there for you esports players. So that kind of sets it apart from some of the competition, like the latest Alienware gaming laptops in the 18 inch that we just reviewed, um, like the Rogue Strix SCART 18 that I just mentioned. So for those of you who play esports and you play more conventional games, RPGs, Assassin's Creed, whatever it is, you have both of those modes natively supported. One thing to note that it requires a reboot if you want to switch between those resolutions and it doesn't change the scaling of the desktop for you. So you're going to have to do that manually. But anyway, so I guess that's why they did that as something to set them apart and to offer that. And like I said, it is one of the best IPS displays I've ever seen. The only weird thing is because there's always something weird going on with Razer Synapse 4 is that it has a bunch of color profiles in Razer Synapse. You can go with P3 and 
sRGB and all that stuff, none of them really seem to work. You have to basically go into Windows settings instead and use the color profile setting there. So otherwise they're all just locked at sRGB. And they some fix this, this thing's been out for months. That said, while the Razer Blade 16 for 2025 was a bit of a problem child with all sorts of bugs and weirdnesses out of the game, some of which have been addressed, some of which maybe haven't, this one is just stable as heck. It's a, a no challenge to take care of laptops, so that's good. Other goodies for creators, UHS2 full-size SD card slot. We have a five megapixel webcam, because goodness knows, sometimes you still have to do a Zoom call. HDMI 2.1, Ethernet as well. And it's nice to have USB-A and USB-C ports on both sides. So, cool that. Pretty well all-rounded laptop, that five megapixel webcam also does Windows Hello, so you can do facial recognition login. Cool. So speaking of cool, how does the laptop run? You know, 10 years ago, blades had a reputation for being hot potatoes. They ran way too hot, okay? Times have changed. Maybe their customer support rep still isn't so great, but their, their thermals are much better now. We do have three fans on board, like I mentioned, with the vapor chamber, but Intel's Core Ultra 9 275HX, this generation of CPU from Intel just hits it out of the park for gaming laptops. It, it offers about a maximum of 20% performance improvement in multi-core tests versus the previous generation from Intel, but it does so while generating less heat and using less power. Now, not that this particular 18-incher, where battery life usually isn't a strong ask anyway, has great battery life, but it makes a difference. And playing demanding games at 4K resolution, today's AAA titles, and looking at the CPU hitting around 80, sometimes 84, on very high settings, I mean, ray tracing on, all that nice stuff, very good, happy to say. And the fans are, relatively speaking, for a gaming laptop, on the quiet side, quiet enough that you can hear the six speaker audio system, which is pretty good, by the way. It has four woofers and two tweeters. I mean, the woofers are probably more like mid range to woofy low end there, but you can actually hear them over the fans. So, mission accomplished there. No, it doesn't burn your hands. Do the palm rests get a little warm? They get a little warm. Do they get hot? No, they don't. Should you use a gaming laptop on your lap and play games? Never. All right, so you're thinking you'd like a 2K plus display like that. SCAR 18 has, for example, or the Alienware. I can understand that that is a happy middle ground for performance, but that said, we do have the RTX 5090 model, okay? We got one that is maxed out, which by the way, Intel provided, not Razer, so we don't all Razer nothing here. It plays games at 4K just fine. I prefer playing games at 4K if I can. Now, I am not an esports person, but that full HD plus mode is there for those of you who are. But I do like to play the latest Assassin's Creed titles, for example. And games like Still Wakes the Deep, which, oh my God, is the worst optimized game in the world on any powerful gaming laptop. But that's another thing. So a higher resolution to me is... So I'm playing at very high settings, ray tracing on even, not a problem. If you want to play those games at 60 plus frames per second, you can do that without turning on frame generation, though the hallmark of this generation of NVIDIA GPUs is frame generation up to 4x. Let's face it, we're already looking at animations. Frame generation is a form of animation. I don't hate on it as long as it looks good, but you can go up easily into the 120s, the 160s on a lot of games. Cyberpunk, no problem. This thing can play it on ray tracing ultra looking really good at native resolution. So uh, I'm fine with this resolution, especially when you do have full HD plus to fall back on for those times when you just must play Fortnite or Overwatch. All right, you want to talk about battery life? No, we, you don't want to talk about battery life. It's an 18 inch gaming laptop. It's never going to be a happy story there. So. Um, it does better, actually, than some of the competition. It does have advanced Optimus, and it gets kind of cranky if you turn that off. Honestly, you can set it to NVIDIA GPU only if you want, or plug something directly into the DGPU port on this. But, uh, you know, I've managed about three and a half hours or so uh, unplugged, not playing games, just productivity, normal things. That's not horrible. That 99 watt hour battery, like I said, that's the biggest you can put in there. We have a 400 watt charger, not too heavy and huge as those chargers go, but um, this is not going to be an Energizer Bunny. They do make the Blade 16 with a way less performant, but more powerful AMD CPU, lower power one, not throwing shade on AMD. There are different class of CPU in that laptop to ensure that it can run longer on a charge. All right, we're going to take a look at the internals now and clear window, like I mentioned. 
thermal shelf here, fans, good ventilation here. We've got a grill over here. There's a lot of ventilation out the back edge as well. These are for the speaker ports right here. So as always, Torx T5 screws, remove them, no tenacious plastic clips, just comes right off. Yay that. All right, so here we are inside an M.2 SSD slots times two. Like I said, PCIe 4, not 5. Weird, bummer that. We have, well, four terabytes of storage. These are Lexar drives right here, and they benchmark pretty good, honestly. And the RAM, because part of this is visible underneath that clear window, they've actually gone with a vanity cover for the RAM, make it look like a circuit board. Kind of cute, I guess. Uh, so the RAM slots are under here. There's two of them. So you can upgrade the RAM, which is nice, and also the Wi-Fi card. Not that you'd probably want to replace an Intel Wi-Fi 7 card with Bluetooth 5.4, but it is there should you ever need to replace it. And we have the highly decorative vapor chamber here thing going on as well over your CPU and GPU. And the battery itself, and just because Razer used to have a battery bloat issue, we have a fan embedded right between the split battery design over here. Two down firing speakers over here. The others are up firing. Here's the housing, in fact, right here. So there are the internals. Nice and serviceable and upgradable despite the thin chassis. Lastly, there's a price. You know, razor blades are posh. These are the, the Porsches of gaming laptops. They have the looks. This looks like a Cayman, okay? Maybe a Panamera because it's pretty big and stretched out. This does not look like a Camry souped up edition. Is there a Camry souped up edition? Never mind. You know what I mean? It's a good looking laptop. It's got CNC aluminum chassis, anodized black finish, yada yada. Everything is nice. It's rigid. Nothing creaks. It feels solid. And it starts at $2,800, which given how wildly expensive gaming laptops have gotten this year for a variety of reasons, some good, some not so good. Uh, that's not bad. That's with a 5070 Ti. All of them start at 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of storage, so you've got that. Now the 5090 is going to bring up to $4,200, which is still cheaper than MSI Titan, and this performs as well as the Titan too. We have reviewed the Titan 18 for this year. That's a lot of money though, but that does bring up to two terabytes of storage. You could go all the way up to, by the way, four terabytes of storage and 64 gigs of RAM if you wanted, but there's that. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.